Have you recently been bitten by the new car bug and you want to go buy a brand new Subaru vehicle because you've had your old one for a while and it's a little bit tired and a little bit old and you're a little bit tired of it and want something nice and newer and want to upgrade? Well, economically right now, it might not be feasible to go buy a brand new car, but a cheaper way to make your old Subaru feel new again is with some Subaru Genuine Accessories. And that's what we're covering in today's video. All of these Subaru Genuine Accessories were sent out by SubaruPartsDeals.com. We're going to be installing them on the 2014 Project Forester today to make this old Forester feel new again. If you are interested in accessorizing or tricking out your older Subaru and making it feel new again, check out SubaruPartsDeals.com. We'll have a link in the description for these accessories for your Subaru Forester and for many more for your other Subaru models. With that said, let's go ahead and jump into tricking out this old Subaru Forester. So guys, as I just mentioned, we're going to be taking all of these genuine Subaru accessories and making this old 224,000 mile Forester feel new again. Thank you once again to SubaruPartsDeals.com for sending these out to us. Check out SubaruPartsDeals.com, your online retailer for genuine Subaru parts. Easy to navigate website. You can search by model, year, and trim, or you can simply type in your VIN number to easily find the parts you need for your Subaru or you can shoot them a call or an email and their staff will be glad to help you figure out what parts you need for your DIY Subaru repair projects. As a big thanks to you viewers, SubaruPartsDeals.com has offered up a promo code Mr. Subaru in all caps, good for 15% off shipping of your order. SubaruPartsDeals.com, a Subaru genuine certified seller of parts for your Subaru vehicle. Anytime you get ready to do any repair on your Subaru, check them out, price them out. They got some of the best prices out there on Subaru Genuine Parts. All right guys, so really quickly, let's go over what we got and what we're gonna be installing today. We got a set of crossbars for our roof rack. We got the sport grill, gonna get rid of the chrome here and black this out. We got a set of the window deflectors. We got a moonroof deflector here. We got seat back protectors, we got a cargo net, and we got a little organization tray for the center console. So without further ado, let's get into it and start installing these Subaru Genuine Accessories. So let's start off with our crossbar kit, which is a Subaru part number E361 SSG000. Now, as it says here, there's no instructions inside, but uh, it's not really necessary. Uh, for these crossbars and uh, you know the factory Subaru Forester normally didn't come with the crossbars it was an addition I have a Yakima roof rack for uh, my bicycles and looking to get one for kayaking getting into kayaking so having these crossbars are great now there are aftermarket bars out there but you know me I prefer to have Subaru genuine stuff on my vehicles so let's go ahead and get these installed so we've got this handy little torx driver t30 in the kit with the crossbars and that is for this bolt right here you need to loosen it on either side so you can swing the bottom piece out of the way and you can set the crossbar on the roof rail then on the underside there is a slot here with two t25 torx fasteners loosen those up and slide the bar out there is an arrow here showing to the front of the car. There is also L and R for correct orientation. So we're gonna loosen these up on both bars, loosen these up on both bars, set them down, adjust, tighten. Pretty quick, pretty simple, pretty easy. All right, everything's loosened up and adjusted out. So now what we gotta do is put them on the roof and tighten everything down. We're not gonna get too precise with our placement of these bars right now because I don't have my accessories or my bike rack. So uh, we're just gonna set them wherever and uh, we can adjust them later front to back to uh, accommodate those, uh, the bike rack and the uh, kayak rack. Just make sure that uh, front is facing forward when placing these. Might need to adjust the little uh, 
rubber feet, the little insulators in there. And once you got it set, you can swing over. that underneath piece and just tighten down that torque screw, that T30 on top. And once you've got the two T30s tightened up, you can reach underneath and tighten those T25s that allow the bar to uh, widen and uh, shorten. using my hand as a spacing guide so we're even on each side. And we're all set there. Now just to tighten up the T25s underneath. And all done on our crossbar installation. Next up on the refresh for this Forester is the grill. We're gonna be replacing this eh, chrome grill with the Sport Gunmetal Gray Grill. Now, I really think this will really stand out well on this car because it's silver. I think that the Gunmetal Grill will be great for any white or silver or light colored Forester, really give a good pop in the front end and would really look great if we contrast that with some black housing headlights. I just noticed not too long ago that this headlight is a black housing headlight, the aftermarket one, and the original is a chrome housing. So definitely need to get a matching pair there. Maybe some newer ones with a projector housing in them. Oh, well, let's go ahead and get after this grill. So let's start off with the easier part, the lower part of the grill. Now, I think you're supposed to take the front bumper cover off to get this out of here, but I believe we can work around uh, without having to do that. So uh, let's see if I'm right or if I look like a fool. So we're gonna take these uh, plastic bumper clips off at the top of the grill to start. Always good to have more of these on hand because as they get old and as they age, they get brittle and they normally break an ear off or so and they don't hold as well. So it's nice to have some nice fresh new ones to put in its place. So we're just gonna set those up there for now. Now on the side here, these little bumpers are actually a push pin themselves. Not exactly sure how to get the top off or if it's supposed to come off. But we'll get in here in this uh, slot and uh, pull it up like so. And get in this slot, pull that one up like so. Now we can pull this forward a little bit. Now there's a Phillips head screw or a JIS cross type in the corner on each side we need to remove. So I'll go grab a screwdriver and we'll get those out of there. Second screw there. Got much more mobility in this grill. Now I think we can just pop it out of the little clips in the bumper cover. It might be easier to access, remove this inner air deflector.
pull that inner air deflector out. Now we should be able to help coax these clips out much easier. Oh, and we got two more little screws at the bottom of the grill, so good thing we didn't just yank that out. So one screw. Screw number two, and our old chrome grill is out. And now will be a perfect time to clean all that disgustingness out of your front bumper. All right, so let's come up with the new sport grill. Push these little lock tabs into place. Clip, clip. We'll take our two little screws, screw them back in at the bottom of the grill. Like so. We're gonna sneak our air deflector air dam back in there, although this sport grill is much less pliable than the uh, old grill we took out. Alrighty, got that in, Put our bumper clips back in, just like so. Push our grill until the sides clip, and we'll put our side screws in. Put our little bumpers back in and put the rest of our bumper clips in. And don't forget to transfer over these little uh, caps. So up here along the top part of the grill along the hood we've got some eight millimeter Little nuts. Should be able to just pop the grill off. There's a couple little push pins in here. Just like so. We can pop that upper part of the grill out. And we've got a couple little eight millimeter fitted screws and then we got some plastic push pins. We'll pull those two out and then we can get in here and pop these up. Just like so. We had a couple of them break, but I mean, we're not reusing this grill and the new grill came with new little uh, 
pop pieces, so here's what it is. And here's a look at all that disgustingness that's gotten behind the grill. So I want to go ahead and take the time to clean that off now in preparation for the new grill. So now all we got to do is take our new header piece here with all the new supplied clips and just pop it into place. As you see here, there's all these little dots. Now you get brand new ones here. It's a little felt washer just to keep uh, water from getting in and rusting the nuts at the uh, base of the grill. Also on our old grill, we've got some hardware we need to transfer over. All of these little bolts or uh, little flanged bolts, we need to pop these out. Uh, just slide them over. They should pop right out just like so and transfer those over to our new grill. We do have a new clip here on the new grill so don't have to transfer that over. So we just put the new little foam pieces on the little uh, stud, whatever you want to call them. I did forget to put the two, transfer the two for the upper grill so I'm going to try to do that now without breaking anything. And uh, we've already transferred the ones over for the new grill. As you see here with the new foam on it, so all we got to do is press it on there, tighten the little nuts on the back and be done. All right, got the two little corner pieces inserted there. Now to slide the grill in place. And there you go. Sport grill all installed and looking so much cooler in the front end. All right guys, next up we'll be installing the air deflector for the moonroof. We've got a little hardware packet here. We've got some alcohol prep wipes and we got some 3M protective uh, clear sticker material here to keep our roof from getting scratched up from the little uh, feet here. So what we need to do is take these and stick them one each on top of our bracket here. We'll then run our screw and our little protector here through the hole, put our bracket and then our nut on the back just loosely until we get it up in place and get it ready to cinch all the way down. All right, now we need to open up the moonroof and get on top of the car. All right, guys, now that we got the moonroof deflector up here, what we're looking for is we're gonna pull down our deflector here, the built-in one, and we're going to position our hooks into place after we've gotten our deflector lined up front to back and side to side. Once we've got that set, we can go through and clean up the area where we're gonna put our hooks, put our little 3M clear piece, hook our hooks in, and then go ahead and do our final tightening of our screw and nut to cinch this down to the roof securely. And once you've got it oriented the way you want it, front to back, side to side, close the moon roof, make sure it doesn't pinch bind, make sure that the factory deflector in here operates as it should. Once that's all set, Go ahead and tighten down those fasteners, pull your film off, and we're done. And got it all set. All our fasteners are tight. And we are good. So let's look at some interior accessories. We've got our tray for the console, 92173SG000. Just like so, take it and pop it in to our console. Now I got a place to put my quarters for going to Aldi. So on to the interior, we continue with our rear seat back protectors, J501SSG400, and a nice little cargo net, F5 
551 SSG001. Well, I was able to find a cargo mat, which is discontinued from Subaru, unfortunately, but uh, our rear seat back protectors will continue the protection when we have our rear seats down and want to put larger cargo in the back. So our rear seat protectors install really easily with Velcro. What we're gonna do is take and slide our seat back protector underneath the lip of this trim piece here for our baby seat anchor. And slide that up just like so. Press down, lock our Velcro in place. And we'll take our bungee here and we will take our headrest out. Put our bungees up around the headrest, little knobs, and put our headrest back in, just like so. Might be good to uh, put some weight back here. Um, after installing it, leave it folded down, put some weight across here just to get this to uh, lay flat because it can get kind of uh, warped in shipping. Over to the other side. Get underneath. Slide them up. And bungees around our headrest. Just like so. We got one more piece that goes in the middle there. And again, just attaches with some Velcro. Pull our mat up, put this down in place and press it down. And we are all set with this install. And last up for our rear will be our rear cargo net. Super simple install. Once again, we'll clip our hooks here into the slots and run our top piece here up over the knobs. And we are all set with our rear cargo net to keep uh, all our valuable secure it in place. Like, I don't know, spare cord oil. All right guys, and our last accessory to install will be the window deflectors, side window deflectors. Uh, we've got these little clips here. We need to press on to these little nubs facing up like this because these will lock into the window channel. There is an adhesive strip that will hold these against the window. Also, these little uh, tabs here will mechanically hold it into the window frame. So just to show you now, because once I get it on the deflector, I'm not able to really show you, but we're gonna go underneath the lip here and under and press that up in there, just like so. And that'll hold us on there physically and then the tape will hold the rest. So we got to do is take our little piece here, put it on, and press down just like so. If we need to readjust afterwards, we can, but you just take it, set it on the little nub, press down till it locks in place. All right, so preparation for install, we're gonna take a nice clean rag and some isopropyl alcohol and we're gonna make sure we clean all this area up here really, really well. We don't want any residue on here, nothing to prevent our adhesive strip from uh, sticking. So let's go all around the door frame at the top, 
just like so. Next, what you want to do is start your adhesive strips. What I mean by that is you just want to pull up a little bit of the tail end of them, of the backing, and turn it up and out where you can grab it. Some of these things are a pain to get started. You just want to have your tail sticking up where you can grab it later. You want to have all the sticky exposed because if you stick it on there wrong, you only get one shot. So you just stick the ends and once you got it set, grab the sticky backer and pull it on out from behind and you will be set into place. So just like so, I'm going to get up on here and get herself set into place, just like so. And then we're going to go underneath and stick our little clips in under our weather stripping for our window. Make sure they fully clip in all the way. Now once they're clipped in, do a little bit of wiggle back and forth, top to bottom. So you got a nice even line, top, bottom, front, back, side to side. And once you're happy with it, you can go through and grab your backing pieces. and pull them out, press that adhesive, get it to set up good. We'll pull our top piece out here. I'm gonna press up here at the top against that adhesive strip. I'm not gonna press at the bottom, that'll pull away. Again, we'll make sure our mechanical clips are clipped all the way up into the channel. They are, and we are set with this window. Now all you gotta do is repeat it three more times on the other windows. All right, ready for our back window now. Again, I'm gonna take clean rag, isopropyl alcohol, stronger the better. I always try to get 91% rather than the 70 some odd. We're gonna clean all this really good, get all that residue off of there, make sure we're gonna get a good stick. Again, we got our pieces started, tails up. We're gonna get in here. We're gonna set our two little clips in the window frame, and then we'll line it up, pull the tape just as we did before. All right, we got our little clip set. Basically where I wanna be with the sticky tape, we can go ahead and pull our tails out once again. And set that adhesive. Just like so. And press on it up against the tape line. Make sure it sets good. Reach on there, make sure your little mechanical clips are locked in there good in the track, nice and true. Flush all the way. And uh, that's it guys, just repeat the same process on the driver's side and uh, you're done. So guys, check out the final result. Of course, those 18 inch Forster XT touring wheels helped immensely with the outside looks of the car, but all of these Subaru Genuine accessories really made this car pop and look new again. Huge thanks once again to SubaruPartsDeals.com for sending these accessories out for the Forester project car. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.